Today I'm going to teach you about something called a loop inside PHP, which is actually going to be our last episode before we start talking about databases together with PHP. So that is going to be very exciting because it's kind of like the point where we can start building some very cool things inside PHP. So with that said, let's talk about the different types of loops that we have inside PHP. Now, if you have learned something like JavaScript beforehand, this is going to be very familiar to you because a loop is pretty much the same thing in most programming languages. So there's, there's like slight differences maybe, but they are going to be pretty much the same thing. So when it comes to a loop, we use them inside our code to spit out a block of code multiple times by just writing one block of code. So we can spit it out maybe like 10 times or, you know, maybe we pull some data out from a database and we want to make sure that we spit all the data out inside our website rather than just one piece of data. So we can keep spitting out data depending on how many iterations we tell it to actually run inside our code. Basically just something that repeats again and again and again and again until we tell it to stop. That's basically what a loop is. So when it comes to a loop, we have the first one, which is called a for loop. And a for loop is a very basic way for us to spit something out depending on numbers. So what I can do is I can actually go inside my for loop here and inside the parameters, we need to include three different parameters. The first one is going to be a starting point. So I'm going to create a variable. We can call this one whatever we want, but it is kind of like a tradition to call it I for iteration because one iteration is one loop. And then we can do like three iterations, which is three loops. So, you know, we have something called a iteration. To begin with here, we're just gonna go ahead and set i equal to zero. And then I'm going to end this off with a semicolon and add in the second parameter or the second statement inside this uh, parameter here. And that is going to be, when do we want this loop to stop running? So at some point this has to stop, Otherwise we create something very bad, which is something called a infinite loop, which is a loop that is going to run endlessly inside your website and eventually crash your browser. So we don't want that to happen. That is a very bad thing. Um, so we want to make sure the loop has a stopping point. So what I can do is I can go in and say that I want variable i to stop once it hits a certain point. And this can be, you know, when variable i is equal to a certain number, which is for example, 10. We can also do less than an equal or greater than an equal. Let me just go ahead and rephrase that. We're running this loop as long as this statement is true. That's what we're doing, okay? So we have to go in and say, as long as a uh, variable i is less than or equal to 10, then we want this uh, for loop to keep looping. That's, that's what we're saying here. So what I can do is I can go inside and add a third parameter, which is going to be how much do we want variable i to increase or decrease every single loop when we loop this out. And what I can do here is I can go ahead and use a incrementer or a decrementer, which is something we talked about in our operations episode. Uh, basically, we can go in and say we have a variable, for example, variable i, and I want to add one to it by writing plus plus. So the first time we loop this, variable i is gonna be equal to zero, but once we get done with this block of code, it is going to change it to one. And then the next time it's gonna be two, and then it's gonna be three and four, until we get to a point where this statement here is no longer true, and then it's just gonna stop running. So what we can do is we can go inside here, and we can just go ahead and echo out something. So we can say echo, um, this is iteration number and then we can go ahead and add a concatenation and say this is iteration uh, variable i and let's also go ahead and add a break to this because we do want to have multiple lines just so we can see it properly inside the browser here so what i'll do is i'll just add a html break and with this i can go inside my browser and as you can see we get this is iteration number zero and number one number two and so forth until we get to iteration number 10. now in this case we are spitting out 11 numbers because we're also spitting out the first one which is you know when the number is zero and there's a couple of ways you can do this if you want this for example to loop out 10 times then we could go ahead and say this should be uh, maybe equal to you know nine or we can also go ahead and say that we should start at one uh, if I do this, for example, if I were to go inside the browser, you can see that we start at one and then we count to 10. Uh, we can also go ahead and set this back to zero and say it's just going to be less than 10. And in this case, it's gonna go ahead and stop at nine. So there's many different ways you can spit this out 10 times. Uh, this is basically just to show you that you can go inside your parameters, if I can find my mouse, there we go. <laughs> 
You can go inside your parameter here and you can change these numbers however many ways you want to. So this is a basic way to create a for loop inside your code. And again, you can write whatever code you want to in between these uh, curly brackets here so you can you know spit out any sort of code that you want and there's many different uses for a for loop for example if you have a string that has a certain number of characters inside of it and then you want to spit out uh, a loop for each character so you can count how many characters is inside a string and then you can do that based on that basically anything you can think of that has something to do with numbers is something you can use in this case here uh, you could also go in and actually replace this so you could say instead of being less than 10 uh, if I were to have another variable up here, I can just call this one test. I can set this one equal to five and I can actually go ahead and replace variable test with my number 10. And in this case, this would also work. So in this case, we're spinning out five times. So you can replace these in here with variables if you wanted to, you know, if, if that's the thing that you want to do. It's just kind of to show that there's kind of like a, a free roam uh, to do whatever you want with this kind of loop here. But now we do also have a second type of loop, which is called a while loop. So what I can do is I can just comment this out just so I can demonstrate what a while loop is. And the way this works is instead of using numbers, I can actually go inside and create any sort of condition that you might want to use from, for example, a if statement. So, you know, when we use a if statement, you can also go in and compare things, you know, do something specific. Uh, we can also create a Boolean. So if I create a variable here, I just call it Boolean. So I'm going to set this one equal to true. What I can do is I can go inside and say, as long as this variable here is equal to true, then I want to loop something out. And now, of course, in this example here, we are creating what is called a infinite loop, just like we did previously. So it is a very good idea that this should at some point make our variable boolean into false otherwise this is not going to be very good for our website because it's going to crash everything uh, so what you could do is you go in here and say let's just go ahead and make variable boolean equal to false in this sort of sense here uh, so this basically means that the first time it's actually going to just loop out one time and then it's going to stop looping again because the first loop it's going to change our variable into false uh, which means that this is not going to echo out anything else. So in this case, we're just going to echo out our Boolean just so we have something to actually spit out inside the website so we can test that this is working. Uh, so if I were to do this, go inside my website, you can see we get true or one in this case, which is the, the number version of being true. Zero would have been false in this case here. So we are spitting something out. Uh, what we can also do is we can actually create something very similar to what we had up here. So I can take my variable test and I can go down and say I want to say we have a variable called test. And as long as variable test is lesser than 10, then I want to spit out this loop here. So what I can do is I can go inside and I can actually say that variable test is going to add one every single loop. And then I can simply echo out something so we can actually see something going on inside the browser here, uh, which could, for example, be variable test, just so we can follow what exactly it's doing. And then I can go ahead and refresh the browser. And as you can see, we get numbers. So it is looping through five times because we had our variable test starting at five and then we just add one each time until we get to less than 10. Uh, so it is doing something here. So anything that you might want to think of that you could, for example, use inside an if statement when it comes to checking for these type of conditions is something you can use inside a while loop, whereas, for example, our for loop up here is more about when it comes to like numbers. So two different ways to loop things out. You can just kind of like use the one that you might find appropriate for a certain situation to spit out a bunch of data a certain number of times. Uh, but what we can also do is I can also go ahead and do something called a do while loop because right now, if I were to go ahead and say that, for example, variable test is equal to 10, which means that immediately the first time, this is actually gonna be false because this is not gonna run a single time. So if we were to actually save this, go inside and refresh it, you can see we get nothing inside the browser. Hmm. And that is because we started out with a false statement. So it's not even going to loop out one thing inside our code. But what we can do, if I can find my mouse here, for some reason it's really difficult in this uh, background color here. Uh, what I can do is I can go inside and create something called a do while loop. And the way that works is I can actually replace the while statement and the parentheses with a do keyword 
And then afterwards down here, I can actually include my while statement. So I can go ahead and say semicolon. And what this is going to do is that it's going to loop this code in the same sort of sense as before, but it will always loop this out at least one time, no matter if this is going to be true or false the first time. Uh, so no matter what happens, this is always going to spit out something one time. So in this example here, even though variable test is going to actually be a false statement inside the while loop, it is still going to echo out variable test one time. So if we were to do this, go back inside, refresh, you can see we get 10. Now let's take a second example here because we do have the last type of loop that we have inside PHP. So right now we talked about for loop, while loop and do while loop, but we do also have something called a for each loop. And in order to demonstrate this one, I will create a array, which right now has three pieces of data. So we have apple, banana and orange. And what I want to do here is I want to loop one time per data inside the array. So let's say I want to spit out all this data inside my browser. What I could do if I wanted to and do it manually is I could go inside and say, well, you know what? I'm going to go and echo out my variable fruit and I want to grab the first index. So I'm just going to go and grab index number zero and then I'm going to go and copy this down, you know, two more times because we have two other pieces of data. So I can also grab number one and number two. And if we were to do this and go inside my browser, you can see we get all three. But you may start to see the disadvantage here because now we actually, first of all, we need to know how many pieces of data is inside this array because we need to know in order to manually type them out here. Um, but also we have to literally manually type them out, which is not really a good thing. Uh, so what we can do instead is we can actually make our code automatically just know how many pieces of data inside this array and then spit them out. And I just want to point out here that a lot of people will look at these loops here and think that, oh, okay, so the, you know, the while loop might be the one I have to use the most because that one is pretty cool. But this for each loop here, that's about arrays. And we haven't done much in array so far, so we're not going to use this one that much, right? However, when it comes to learning about databases and actually grabbing data from a database and outputting it inside our website, you do need to know how to create a for each loop because that's the one we use in order to do this. Um, so a for each loop is quite important. So what I can do here is I can actually create one. So we're going to use the for each keyword parentheses and curly brackets. And then inside the parentheses, we need to first of all, add in the array that I want to actually grab the data from. And what I want to do is I want to use another keyword called as, and then I want to give it a placeholder that I can refer to inside the actual brackets down there or inside the curly brackets uh, that is going to use in order to grab the data from inside the array. So in this case here, because I want to just grab one piece of fruit, I could actually say that the placeholder is going to be fruit you know, a singular fruit. So what I can do here is I can save this and then I can go inside the brackets down here, the curly brackets. I keep saying brackets for some reason, um, but I can go inside the curly brackets and I can echo something out. So I could say this is a, which is not going to make a lot of sense in this case because apple is supposed to be an apple. I do know a little bit of English grammar, but you know, we're just doing a small example here. So it's okay. Uh, but what I can do is I can say, this is a, then add in the fruit variable because that is going to be the placeholder. And then I want to just close it off here. Actually, let's go ahead and move everything down to the next line. Just so we have a little bit of, you know, neatness going on in here. So we're going to add a break. And just like so, it is going to go through each of these data and spit it out inside the browser. So if we were to save this, Go back in. You can now see we get this is a apple, this is a banana, and this is a orange. But now what about a associative array? Because this is a indexed array and we did talk about arrays in a previous episode. Basically, we have something called a indexed array, which is where we go in. And if you want to spit something out when it comes to an array is you refer to the index of the array. So in this case, if we want to grab apple, then we refer to index number zero. If we want to grab banana, we refer to index number one. Uh, but what about a associative array? So what I have here is another example of a associative array where basically we go in and we say that the key is going to be apple and the value is going to be the color of the fruit. So we can keep doing that. Banana is going to be yellow. 
uh, and orange is gonna be orange because you know it's the same name. So what I could do here is I could actually just go inside my browser now and refresh everything. But if I were to do that, it is actually going to be echoing out the values uh, because when we use the S keyword inside of for each loop down here, it is actually going to refer to the values inside this array. So right now the values are actually gonna be the colors that we added in here. So if we were to go inside my browser, refresh, you can see we get the colors in here. But what if I want to also get the key? Because that is also something we can do in order to spit this out inside the website. So the way we can do this, I can just simply go ahead and copy paste this little arrow up here because we do it the exact same way and go after my fruit and say I want to point to another placeholder, which in this case, it could actually be the color. So if we were to go back down inside my echo, I can say this is a fruit that has a color of, and then I can go ahead and add in another concatenation. So just gonna go ahead and add in our color uh, value here. So I'm just gonna paste it in. And if I were to go back inside the browser, you can now see that we get this is a apple that has a color of red. So we're also getting the key in this case here. And this is a small introduction to how to, you know, loop something out inside the browser, depending on how much data you might have inside a array or you want to loop something based on how many numbers there are or based on a condition, like for example, with an if statement. Uh, so we have four different types of loops that we can use depending on the situation that we might want to find one of them useful. So in this case here, we have something to work with. So with that, in the next video, we're going to start talking about databases, which is going to be very exciting. I know it doesn't sound exciting because databases, I, it kind of sounds a bit dry. Um, but when we start using databases with a website using PHP, that is the moment where we really start to see something happening with PHP inside our website. So that is going to be very fun to do. Uh, so with that said, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I'll see you guys next time.